Murray with CBC. We're here for the meeting. Okay. To enter the Elks Hall in Terrace, B.C. on this January Tuesday night is to enter an alternate reality. You notice I've got vaccine, the word vaccine in quotation marks here, because you know it's not a vaccine, right? The draw is two B.C. doctors arguing against COVID-19 vaccines. Their presentation has the polish of a TED Talk and the fervor of a tent revival. I think this is the biggest lie that's ever been told to humanity. That's Stephen Malthouse, a family physician from Deadman Island. Welcome, Dr. Charles Hoff. And that's Charles Hoff, a GP from the BC Interior. Both are fully licensed doctors with no official record of discipline from the BC College of Physicians and Surgeons. And all of the fully vaxxed people are wearing masks. And the COVID rips through there is the clearest evidence that the shots don't work and the masks don't work. The doctors share misinformation to support their argument that COVID-19 vaccine harms, even kills people. They have held meetings in 14 communities across BC since mid-December. The presentation resonates. I think it was excellent information. I think it was very informative. 90% of the people are vaccinated and it's much worse than what it was, right? So, Most of my nieces and nephews have been jabbed. Yeah. And I suspect that within a couple of years, a couple of them will be dead. We love terrorists. <laughs> a new day, a new audience. Here, the media is portrayed as complicit. Our questions part of a giant cover-up. Both of your presentations, doctors, here um, is contrary to the overwhelming public scientific evidence that the vaccine is indeed safe and effective. And I would like you to respond to that. Yeah, I think that comes a question of what we've taken as scientific and what we've taken as experts. They're just telling lies. Or Dr. Alistair McAlpine is a pediatrician specializing in infectious so diseases. He is one of 13 doctors who complained to the College of Physicians and Surgeons about Dr. Hoff spreading misinformation last December. Nothing's happened, at least not publicly. Lives are at stake, people are being harmed, the public is being harmed, and the fundamental mandate of the college is to protect the public. And in my opinion, they're simply not doing that at the moment. An ongoing silence and inaction in the face of the actions of these physicians is just not acceptable. It was false diagnoses of COVID, right? Positive PCR we know there is an investigation into Dr. Malthouse too, but only because of court documents he's filed. A petition filed in the B.C. Supreme Court says the College of Physicians and Surgeons instructed Malthouse not to speak on COVID-related topics back in May 2021. Malthouse argues that violated his right to free speech and maintains his statements are based in science. I think this is also where he's talking about uh, the idea that there's actors playing patients in, IC in the ICU. We asked Professor Timothy Caulfield, who specializes in medical misinformation, to count the false statements we recorded at the Terrace meeting. I just couldn't believe the degree to which every one of his conclusions, to some degree, was based on misinformation or a conspiracy theory. And it's not just the road trips prompting investigations. Stephen Malthouse has been linked to the website Enable Air. It's being investigated by the RCMP for offering fraudulent vaccine exemptions. These are the exemption letters from Stephen Malthouse. One exemption letter signed by Malthouse made its way to Duncan McIntosh in Hamilton, Ontario. McIntosh owns a sports facility and was checking exemptions from participants. The letter looked suspicious, so he called Malthouse. And it didn't take him more than five seconds to go on about what I should do to get exemptions and how the process worked and which organizations you go to to get the exemption and what sort of things you talk about. Uh, it was pretty clear that this wasn't legitimate. He says Malthouse told him exemptions could be obtained on the website. I asked him how it is that a person in Hamilton would get the, uh, the exemption, and he said, well, you go to Enable Air and you follow through them, and then they're... He's the one who issues the document after you've made the dealings and the business arrangement with Enable Air. I did report it uh, to the uh, British Columbia College of Physicians and I never heard anything back. I was really disappointed in uh, not even a return phone call or email. 
We repeatedly asked the BC College of Physicians and Surgeons for an on-camera interview. It replied, we are unable to discuss the actions of individual physicians or confirm whether they are being investigated. When we asked if physicians could be suspended on an interim basis while an investigation is ongoing, it said extraordinary action must be necessary to protect the public based on a real risk that cannot be speculative. If this isn't an extraordinary time and if these doctors are not directly placing the public at risk, then I don't know what is and then I think that there would never be a situation <laughs> where the college would step in and it would then be rendering itself obsolete, in my opinion. Stephen Malthouse didn't answer our questions about the college investigation. I think you'll have to ask the college about those investigations that you're referring to. And with regard to renewing our licenses, well, we're both practicing physicians. We both have active licenses right now. Are you deceiving people, Dr. Hall? No, I will, I will never deceive people. I do what I do because I love my patients. It's not just the people who come to see the doctors who hear their message. It's all live streamed on the internet. After a few photos with fans, the doctors get on their bus. It's on to the next town and the next eager audience. So, Lindsay, is there any other way to prevent doctors from spreading misinformation besides complaining to the College of Physicians and Surgeons? Well, going to the courts could be one route, but lawyers we spoke to said that that would take a long time and that courts could be reluctant to step in where professional colleges have jurisdiction. The physicians who are upset with the college say they believe the college is relying on the wrong tools for this moment. A slow, methodical approach may make sense when you're dealing with a specific incident in a hospital, say, but in a pandemic with social media and everything changing so quickly, these physicians want faster and more public action to counter misinformation. And I'm sure some people watching are wondering whether there's a link between these meetings across BC and the convoy protests. It was really interesting because we were there two weeks ago when that convoy was just beginning to go across the country. And at the beginning of each of the meetings we attended, there would be an update about where those trucks were and the kind of support they were getting as they drove through the country. And that was really met with big cheers in the meetings we attended. For the people there, this really does tie in to what they uh, believe it means to be Canadian. And they believe that vaccine mandates are un-Canadian. All right, Lindsay, thank you. You're welcome.